Um, I'm really passionate about mindset because I personally was a hot mess. And I can't, you know, speaking from experience, I had to give up my membership to Control Freaks and Perfectionist Anonymous because I clearly was not doing very well trying to be all things, you know, very driven and performance based. And I kept pushing myself until I literally hit burnout and breakdown. And when I started to look at things deeper, I'd realized part of my problems well, a big part of my problems was the way that I was thinking because I had stinking thinking, which was keeping me in these perpetual cycles of, you know, negativity, anxiety, depression, all those things, and just ignoring it and pushing myself past what is healthy. Having gone through this process myself, I'd realized there are steps we need to take. Like it's, we can't go to the gym and, and start pushing a hundred pounds of weight when you've just started out, right? It's just like life. It makes absolute sense. So if we want to start by shifting our mindset, we really have to start small and then build up. But it all starts with creating the right intentions of, again, where we want to be. But I like to look at it from like a four-step process. So step number one is the awareness. So in my case, I was in denial. I was like so blind to the blind spots because that's why they, they're, they're called blind spots because we can't see them. And so somebody held up a mirror and said, do you really want to live like this? Is this who you really want to be? And for me, that was a really hard thing is to say, I need help. Like, I can't do this. Like, I'm not managing. And when you, especially in a leadership position, when you have people looking to you to lead, whether it's in a family and a, a business and a job, it's hard to raise your hand and say, you know what, I actually can't do this. I need some help. I need some time out. I need to take to really reassess where I'm at. And a lot of us, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a big proponent in, for resiliency and, and, you know, consistency. But there's also this thing, this sort of hustle and grind mentality out there that if you just keep going and hustle, 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 and they don't give up. Now, I understand the concept of, don't give up if you you are no, you know that you just have to keep going. But sometimes you do need to give up. Sometimes you need to give up the pushing and the straining and the, tr and the trying because sometimes where you're at and where you're going is only going to end up with you over the cliff. So sometimes we do know when to have to say, time out, I need to take, I need to stop. You know, I'm trying to build awareness in the community and let, let people know that it's you. there is no shame in saying that you're struggling. There is no shame and um, people aren't going to think any less of you if you say like, I, I'm really struggling with this. Like, I'm, I'm struggling with these anxious thoughts or I'm struggling with feeling like I, I'm not good enough. Um, that's, a, that's always a very popular one. Like I'm not good enough or old enough or young enough or, or whatever enough to do this or not do this. And that's often just these thoughts we have in our mind. And so for me, one of the skills I try to teach my students is the awareness key, which is to actually figure out what you're thinking. And this is a concept called metacognition. It's the idea of thinking about what you're thinking about. Because a lot of us, we have these tapes, you know, I'm an 80s baby. I remember the VHS tapes that would just, you know, rewind, <laughs> pause. But we have this mental tape that keeps um, playing over and over in our minds that we don't often challenge. We just let it play. We just let it give out its spew out its junk, thinking that it's all of us. But it's, uh, and it's kind of like a filtering process. Is this my thoughts? Is this inputs I'm getting from other things? Is this? And I'm I'm a woman of faith, so I also believe in the spiritual aspect too. Is like picking up what other people are giving off and just the awareness. Like you can't fix something unless you know it's broken. So the first thing is to admit I need help. And being broken isn't a bad thing. It means we're in a process of experimentation and changing and we, we can rebuild and we can renovate. It's, and the other thing is to remember is this is temporary. Life is seasons. Like if you look outside your window and you, you see wherever you are in the world, life is seasonal. You're never going to be stuck in the in a winter season where it feels like nothing's growing. And you're never going to be in a harvest season in summer where everything's just flying. But of course, in the entrepreneurial world, everyone thinks that when you're flying high, you're always going to be there. But what comes up must go down and what goes down must come up, right? There's just there's just principles in life we can't get around. But and to me, you know, this is more than just a mental health thing. This is actually about emotional maturity. Because in my personal opinion, I don't think we have a mental health problem. I think we have an emotional regulation problem. Because we're not taught how to regulate our emotions, which are connected to our thoughts. We just allow them to run around. And in my book, I talk about the toddler, the, the teenager, and the therapist. Too many of us are allowing the two-year-old toddler have a hissy fit who wants what they want right now, has a hissy fit when it doesn't get its way, or the teenager who's very stroppy, apathetic, and is like, you know, oh, nobody understands me. We have these, these tapes that are just playing and playing and playing. We, I like to introduce the thought mode of the therapist. What's the therapist going to do? He's going to hold up a mirror and say, you know, that thought you're having, is that really true? Or is it just you assuming that? Like, let's really be honest today. Let's say that thought I just had, that, that emotion or that feeling of, of anxiety, I'm not anxiety. That's not my personality. That's not who I am. 
it's how I'm feeling in the moment. And if we just look at the word emotion, it's energy in motion, which means it has to move, right? So what we do in society is we keep ourselves plugged in to stimulus and social media, all the things we're thinking, thinking, and we just, it's like we're getting bombarded and electrocuted with all these things that we're not allowing those processing to move through us because we're just either medicating it, ignoring it, we're in denial, we're, we're distracting ourselves with, you know, games and whatever else, whatever vices we want to put in there is because we really don't want to deal with our emotions. We don't want to deal with our thoughts. And as an adult, we think, well, we should have it together. We don't want anyone to know we don't have it together. But listen, honey, nobody's got it together. We're all guessing. And I have two young adult uh, children. I always say, listen, welcome to adulting. Every day is a guesswork. Every day is experiments. And every day is a learning opportunity. You never stop learning. And I always just say, if, you know, for people who are listening, if you're feeling these emotions, don't feel like it's, um, there's nothing wrong with you. You're not broken. You're just a human being. You're going through emotions. You live with life. Some days are good days. Some days are bad days. And we just need to learn how to regulate and take our thoughts captive. Like when that thought pops in your mind, you need to ask yourself, be the therapist. Like, is this true or is this imagined? Am I feeling anxious because I started thinking of something that's in my control or without my control? Like start to have these little conversations with yourself. And another tool I always uh, advise my students do is to write down your thoughts. Just because we become adults, we're not too old for crayons and, and pencils. It's actually part of our brain me mechanism is if you can use a pen and paper, it slows your, your brain processing down and you can become more objective. So if you can write down the thoughts you're having, like I always say as a child, I was like, dear diary, you won't believe what she said to me today. It's so dramatic. But then I would read it back. I'd be like, girl, mm -mm. do you really talk to yourself like that? Mm, I don't think so. And you start to challenge yourself. And I think that's really a key we need to build and um, awareness. And then once that awareness is there, then it's like, okay, I know we have a problem. Let's figure out where we want to go and then take the steps to get there. But I always say awareness is number one. And if today is a light bulb moment for you and you've realized it's okay, today is a new day, well then congratulations. And today is a new day. You can make change.